I've always hated this school. Always uninteresting, boring, delinquent student body, terrible teachers, just downright awful. Well, today, that's about to change. It's 6am, and it's time to get ready for school. I go and take a shower, brush my teeth, throw on some clothes, put my headphones on, which are blasting metal, and now I'm off to school. I've always hated this damn iPod. It has always been very glitchy, and sometimes would even play by itself randomly. And from the outboard speaker, instead of the headphones, even when they were plugged in. It was doing that while I was out. As I'm walking in the darkness, I get a weird feeling. A sudden, ominous aura surrounds me. As I start nearing my bus stop, a small fog cloud starts lowering towards the ground, away from its position in the sky. I arrive at my bus stop, and I'm greeted by no one. This isn't surprising, though. It's the last day before spring break, and the people in my school have a tendency to take an extra day off before a break actually starts. I thought they were morons, but after what the day held for me, they didn't seem so idiotic after all. After about a five-minute wait, I see my bus trailing down the street. As it started to near, I began feeling uneasy, but I didn't know why. I just shrugged it off. When I get on the bus, I'm greeted by a substitute bus driver who had a slightly eerie smile that seemed a little too strange. He had rotten, yellow teeth, a dark complexion, and lazy, dark eyes. As I turn to find my seat, I notice nobody is on the bus. This is where I knew everything was going wrong. I turned to dart towards the exit, but the driver slammed the door shut and stepped on the gas pedal with a mumbling giggle under his breath. I started yelling, Get me off this bus right now! He just completely ignores me. I try to pull the lever that opens the door, but to no avail. The bus driver looks at me with an angry and serious expression and says, There is no getting off until we reach our destination. Now sit down and shut the hell up. I do as he says in fear of what could happen next, and he continues laughing to himself with his evil, twisted smile. We reach the school and he continues to say nothing. I get off the bus and he bolts away, like he was in a hurry to get somewhere, or maybe to just get away. The school looked different. It seems a lot shadier. The fences are replaced by walls that reach about 20 feet up into the air. There's no visible way out. I start walking around the campus, hopelessly trying to find an exit. I go from class to classroom in hopes of finding someone, anyone. But the place was deserted, or so I thought. As I enter what normally was my homeroom, I hear a clicking on the walls coming from the next room. I freeze. I get goosebumps, and the hairs on my neck stand up. I hear a loud thumping noise, which, to my immediate horror, I assumed were footsteps of something very large. I could also hear a faint scraping noise, which I could only imagine was a knife trailing across the wall. The footsteps leave the room, and I attempt to hide. Silence. After I stop hearing the sounds, I wait an additional ten minutes just to be safe, and once I fully believe that it is secure, I emerge from my hiding spot. The moment I step out and find it in my sights, the creature comes bursting through the door, knocking it off its hinges. This being was about eight feet tall. It had very sharp nails, with arms about as long as my body. It had piercing black eyes, a very muscular body, and a tail with barbs. It looked around the room, snarling, with a blackish liquid coming out of a mouth filled with razor-sharp, 
blood-stained teeth. It seemed not to notice me, and as I examined it further, it seemed to have bandages around its head, including bandages covering the eyes. Part of the bandage was peeling off, and for a split second, I could faintly see its eye, swollen and sewn together. I freeze, holding my breath, hoping to keep it from noticing me, and it eventually starts making its way away from me. Just as it's about to leave the room, my iPod glitches and starts randomly playing very loud music, and the creature instantaneously spins around and shoots in my direction. I narrowly dodge him and roll off to the side. He flies at me again and I duck. He lands on a desk and the desk collapses. I take this opportunity to grab the metal leg of the desk it broke and put the now serrated edge in front of me to defend myself. It flies at me once more, but it's met with a whack to the head from the desk leg I have. But it seems unaffected and lands on me. It raises its hand, and as it's about to swing its claws down, we both hear a loud hissing from about 30 feet outside the room. It turns its head in that direction and lowers its hand back onto the ground. Its tail falls between its legs in a sudden moment of pure fear, and then hastily escapes the room through the window to my right. I'm scared, and I'm confused. What could possibly have scared that monstrosity off? But I didn't want to stick around and find out. I remembered that the custodians used to use this lift to put up decorations on the gym's ceiling, so I decided to head to the large storage room to look for it. This is what I would need for my escape from this hell. I grab my new weapon and head towards the emergency exit of the classroom. I have an injury on my chest from that thing digging its claws into me when holding me down. I quickly take the exit, find the nearest bathroom, and disinfect my wound with the soap. I cursed under my breath. I made myself a makeshift bandage with a torn-off ragged piece of my shirt, which was cut during my encounter with the beast. After getting fixed up, I head to the custodian's room. The door is blocked off by a vending machine pushed in front of it. I'm forced to grab the nearby security cart and slam it into the vending machine, causing its contents to spill out whilst it tips over. I grab a soda and drink it to regain strength and think over my plan. I know what I'm going to do. I go inside the custodian's office and I see the lift. I notice the garage door on the other side of the office and try to find the controls. I climb up the stairs and find the room with the button to open the garage door. As I enter, I hear a scratching noise, the same scratching that I heard when I first encountered the beast. The scratching is trailing along the garage door. All of a sudden, I hear a large ripping noise as the creature tears its way through the door. It looks up, crouches, and thrusts itself with a powerful leap to the second floor. It tilts its head and looks at me in the eyes as it slowly walks towards me. It scratches its claws against the wall, leaving marks. It then charges at me. I jump away into the room with the button. It follows persistently. It attacks again and misses, hitting the button causing the door to open. I start making a run towards it. As I rush down the stairs, I trip and roll down, almost cutting myself with my own weapon. As I lay on my back, trying to recuperate, it jumps down the stairs and just as it's about to land on me, I raise my weapon and it pierces its forehead. It lays on top of me, dead. I roll it off me and lay there, catching my breath. When I look over, its dead eyes are looking at me lazily. I get up and continue with my plans. Unfortunately for me, the desk lag I was using bent from the force of entering the creature's head and snapped. 
so it's now not very usable. I go into the closet and grab a broom and a toilet plunger. I broke off the heads of both so that I only have the wood. I took the serrated edge of the desk leg and used it to fashion myself two spears. I held the broom spear in my hand and put the smaller plunger spear in my belt loop. I get on the lift and drive it towards the wall on the east side of the campus. I'm breathing heavily, anticipating something to mess up my plans, but nothing seems to happen, so I calm down. I arrive at the wall and start raising the lift. As I'm about to reach the top, I hear hissing. I look behind me, and now I know why the creature ran. My eyes met with this horrendous being. It's nearly identical to the last one, with the exception of being bigger, stronger, and to my dismay, having black, leathery, bat-like wings, none of which even touching the rush of fear I experienced while trying to comprehend the amount of grotesque horror packed into this disgusting monster's face. Its features were built out of sharp spines, making up his facial structure were black, sharp edges. If there was a rounded-off edge in this creature's anatomy, I had not been able to find it. It flies up and taunts me as it flaps in front of me. It grabs the lift and pushes it, and I almost fall off. It's now or never. I climb off the lift and hop onto the wall. I narrowly dodge the creature's strike and toss my spear down. I slide down the wall and push off and roll onto the street. I'm on the ground, so now it's more of a fair game, though I'd hardly call this fight fair. I pick up my spear, the creature comes at me, and I'm able to puncture its wing. It gets angry and grabs the spear squeezes its fist and snaps it in half. I grab the plunger spear from my belt loop and await the creature's advance. It attempts to fly at me, but due to its punctured wing, it spirals and crashes. I run at it, jump on its back, and attempt to stab it in the back of its head. It was as if I took a stick to iron, because all I heard was a loud thud. It took no damage and shook me off it. I huffed strongly, analyzing the situation. There was nothing on my mind except taking this thing down. Then it clicked. It came at me and I dodged, having its claw barely graze my cheek. I can see that he's reading my movements better. He lunges again, but this time I jab the spear into the center of its eye, sliding it clean through its brain. Its body instantly shuts down. I check my phone, and it's 1 p.m. I try to call the police, but I only hear an ominous dial tone. The streets are completely deserted. There are no signs of life. I take a small break, and then I start sprinting home and throw open the door. I scream, Mom? Dad? From their room, I hear the sound of nails scratching on the wall.